What is up, guys? My name is Peyton Goucher, uh, and I am the Next Step uh, pastor here at Verve. I work with students and kids, and I'm just excited to be a part of this team. If I have not gotten to meet you, um, I'm looking forward to hopefully uh, doing that here soon. Um, but in the meantime, uh, this is me. Hopefully, we can see each other soon. So like I said, welcome to our online community service that we're having tonight. Um, like you, I am currently sitting in my living room. I have a, my desk that I work at during the day in, my, in our living room here, and so uh, I'm in my living room as well. And so what I want to ask you to do right now is to go and gather some elements, if you haven't already, for our time of communion tonight. And if you do not have the traditional um, bread and cracker, that is totally okay. Or if you don't have the juice or wine or whatever it is that you're going to use today, that, like I said, it is totally okay. Uh, I am actually don't have either of those things with me as well. Um, so I'm working some Mio juice, some watermelon flavored Mio juice, as well as I have my uh, pretzel thins that I'm using uh, in place today. And so if you don't have the traditional elements, don't be afraid. It's all okay. It is more about the symbolism uh, and the time that we're going to spend together with um, God today. And so if you haven't already, go and gather those elements and we're going to go ahead and get started. Hey, this is, uh, this is really cool. I want to thank you for joining us as we gather virtually to take communion together. We're going to talk about it a little first, and then we'll actually take communion. Um, I thought we'd start at the start, at the, the first time communion was ever offered and shared. So the celebration of communion began the night before Jesus was crucified. Jesus is having a special dinner with his friends, the Passover meal. Passover was a meal that God's people had celebrated for hundreds of years. In this meal, they would remember this incredible moment in history when God saved his people through the sacrifice of a lamb. It was the most important moment in the history of God's people, and they would remember and celebrate it once a year with the Passover meal. So listen to what Jesus does in the middle of this Passover meal. It's in Luke chapter 22, uh, verses 19 and 20. It says, he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, after supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. That is the first time communion was ever offered, ever shared. Jesus took this incredibly important memorial meal that reminded them of the most important thing that had happened when God allowed the death of a sacrificial lamb to save his people and he changed the meaning of it. Jesus makes it now about the new most important thing that's ever happened when Jesus became the sacrificial lamb and when God allowed the death of his son to save people. They had the Passover meal to remember. God gives us the communion meal to remember. And after Jesus is crucified, raised from the dead, and the church begins, Christians start taking communion, also sometimes called the Lord's Supper, each Lord's Day, whenever they would gather together. So uh, some of the history behind communion. I wanna give you some things to think about as you take communion tonight, but not just tonight, also in the future. Now, this last year has been anything but typical, but typically we take communion every time we gather together for worship. And I'm hoping that tonight's communion service can actually help communion become even more meaningful for you in the future. To do that, I wanna show you another Bible passage about communion. So uh, Jesus died and rose again about 33 AD. This letter is written in 55 AD, 20 years later, to the church that met in the city uh, of Corinth. It says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. 
What do we think about when we take communion? Personally, I always close my eyes, but what am I looking at? What do you look at when you take communion? First, you look back. You look at back at Jesus and what he did on the cross. In that passage, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. The bread and juice remind us of Jesus' body and blood. We remember what he did on the cross. Uh, for me, I'll often hold the bread and juice and I close my eyes and just to the best of my ability, I prayerfully try to picture Jesus on the cross. I'm just trying to look at him, uh, remembering what he did. What do you think about when you take communion? You think about Jesus and the cross. You think about the love that put Jesus on the cross. Jesus said in John 15, 13, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You're his friends. And he died for you. And you think about the love that put him on the cross. You also think about the obedience that put him on the cross. Do you know that Jesus didn't have to go to the cross? He knew it would be horrible torture, not just physical, but especially spiritual. He didn't have to do it, but he did because it was God's plan for his life. Uh, Philippians chapter two, verse eight says, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So you think about the love that put him on the cross and the obedience that put him on the cross and the grace that put him on the cross. Uh, grace means to give someone the opposite of what they deserve. That's what God gave you and me. In the Bible, Romans chapter five says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. He doesn't ask us to clean up our act first. When we were at our worst, he did the best for us. And every time we take communion, we remember, I'm a sinner. I made myself God's enemy through my sin. I deserve separation from him. I deserve punishment. I deserve hell. And God's response was to have Jesus die for me. It's mind blowing, right? It's impossible to get your head around. It's grace. And man, we need that reminder. That's why God gave us communion. So first you look back. We look at, back at what Jesus did on the cross. Second, you look in. You look in and examine yourself in light of the cross. Remember, we just read that verse. It said, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. That's part of the idea of God giving us this regular practice, this habit of taking communion. Uh, there are a lot of Bible verses where God tells us to examine ourselves and communion is this built-in opportunity to do that. What should we examine about ourselves? Well, well, one option I find helpful is to use those same three things that put Jesus on the cross. Remember, it was love that put Jesus on the cross. We looked at that verse, John 15, 13. Jesus said, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And he's talking about what he did. But listen to the, the very verse just before that, John 15, verse 12, where Jesus said, this is my commandment, love each other in the same way I have loved you. Jesus love led him to the cross and we should love in the same way. Check out this verse. This is an intense one. First uh, John chapter four, verse 20 says, but if we say we love God and don't love each other, we are liars. We cannot see God so how can we love God if we don't love the people we can see? Man, the verse says, if, if we claim to love God and we don't love people, we're lying. And in communion, we examine ourselves. Do I love the way Jesus loved? And remember, it was obedience that put Jesus on the cross. And Jesus said to us in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So in communion, we examine ourselves. Am I obeying God? Where is there sin in my life? And if we examine ourselves and detect sin, which we will, we confess it to God. And look at the amazing promise we have from him. First John chapter one, verse nine says, but if we confess our sins to God, 
he can always be trusted to forgive us and take our sins away. So in communion, we examine ourselves, right? Do I love the way Jesus loved? Am I obeying Jesus? And remember, it was also grace that put Jesus on the cross. So am I giving people grace in the way Jesus gave grace to me? God tells us that we are to love our enemies as he loved us when we were his enemies, that we are to forgive in the same way we've been forgiven. And so that the people who you are tempted to hate, um, to despise, to hold a grudge against, to think and say mean things about, do you love and forgive them? Am I showing grace the way Jesus showed grace? What do you look at when you take communion? First, you look back. You remember what Jesus did. Second, you look in, you examine yourself. And third, you look forward. Uh, We read that verse earlier. It said, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And that, that is so cool. It means that when we take communion, we're not just focused on what happened because of Jesus 2,000 years ago, it means we also look forward to what's going to happen in the future because of Jesus, because we know that Jesus is coming again, this time not to die, but to give us life, eternal life. And that means that communion is not just a funeral dirge, it's a victory anthem. We know the victory has already been won. And even though We may be stuck in difficult times right now. And we have hope because in communion, we look forward and we celebrate our victory in Christ. Well, I I hope that's helpful. And um, let's do that. Let's do that right now. So we're gonna take communion together. Uh, Hopefully you have something prepared. Uh, Typically, Communion is um, bread or a cracker, juice or wine, but whatever you have today, it will, it will be fine. And, um, and now we have some ideas of what we can think about during this time, right? So if you would take your, uh, your bread or cracker, whatever you have, remember he t- says he took some bread in his hands and then after he had given thanks, thank you God, uh, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is given for you he handed it out and he said, eat this and remember me. So let's do that. Remember what we can think about during this time. If you're, if you're ready, I don't want to rush. But um, if you take your juice or wine or whatever you have, and remember, it said Jesus took a cup of wine in his hands, and he said, this is my blood. With it, God makes his new covenant, his new agreement with you. So drink this and remember me. So let's drink and let's remember Jesus, what he did for us. And thank you, God, for giving us Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross for us. And thank you for your love that overcomes our sin and gives us victory and gives us life.